Hello. What's up, guys? Man, where's Shala? I have to leave at three. And he's not here yet. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Last online 10 hours ago. Hmm. Well. You're playing tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, I'm almost 3.8k. Yeah, I was liking crit critical information as well. That I have to leave it. <laughs> same, actually, same. Oh shit, I forgot I have to. I have to um, transfer some money. You know what I hate the most? When I have to pay somewhere and I pay with cards and then the card gets declined. And then it's this awkward thing where they think that you don't have any money on your account. I mean, I do have money on my account, right? <laughs> Let me check. I think I do. Anyway, so it just didn't work, and <laughs> she she came up with this excuse, and I'm not sure if this is true or if she just made this up to make me feel less bad. Thanks for 15 months, Kitty. What's up? Good morning. <laughs> yeah, because she basically said that they had a power outage, and that's why the machine didn't work, like the card machine. And I'm not sure if that's true or if she made it up to make me feel less bad. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> How you doing, kitty? But yeah, now I have to transfer the money. Because I did the dentist thing. They cleaned my teeth. And now I have to give them money. Yeah, I have money on my account. What the hell? <laughs> I did have money. Oh, man. Okay. Thanks for 34, Lanaga. What's up? <laughs> funny, funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, let's send them the money. Did I already send them money before? Or do I have to... I hate writing e-buns. They're so long. Um, Dr. Matt, what does Matt mean? M-E-D dot. What does, what does it stand for? Dr. M-E-D dent. I would assume that's dentist or dent something something. Okay, Ivan, where is it? Man, those numbers are just so long. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. 105 euros, of course. Man, dentist is so expensive. Okay, this song is too sad. Moving on.
Medicom. That could be it. That sounds like it makes sense. Why is this another sad song? We're not sad today. Oh, this is apologize. Oh my god. Alright, send them the money. Do I have to do anything else? Do I have to take a picture of this? Can I deduct taxes from this one? Surely I can. But there's no thing on it. Isn't there usually this thing on it? Wait, I'll show you. Or am I stupid? And usually when you have a, an invoice from a doctor, you get this thing here, no? Wait, no, I can't show you any information. <laughs> this one here. This one. No? But it's not on this. Does it not count then? I don't know. How, how does anything work? There's no, uh, no sticker on this one. It counts without a sticker. Okay. I'll take a picture. Says. It's a virtu virtual thing. It's an un digital um, thing. I see, I see, I see. I get it now. <laughs> I understand. Cool. Now we did that. Perfect. <laughs> Your reflex. One good question. I am 250. And on Destro, before that. And in 11th to 12th, I do around 9k. Destro is not that good on low keys. On low keys, um, things die too fast. And usually people also don't pull enough. I have noticed this on... The lower the key is, the less people pull. Because people are scared and don't know the dungeons really well. So tanks usually are... Just not... Like, they just don't know how much they're supposed to pull. So they just pull every pack one by one. Which creates a situation where... Warlock doesn't scale well. Because Warlock needs... A certain number of targets to sustain Reign of Fire. And if you only pull three mobs at a time, then you can't do that. So you need to do big keys and you need to pull a lot. Nah, I'm not posting anything today. I'm too, uh, yeah, just someone said. <laughs> Show us the new dungeons on the PTR. I was playing a, a decent amount of PTR actually, yeah? but today I only have three hours, so I'm just quickly gonna do some some keys on on live because it's always a pain to find people on PTR. Thanks for five months, Sammy. What's up? But yeah, they are highlighted if you want to check them out. If you go to my videos, then you can see them highlighted there. Oh my god, what 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 kind of sad playlist is this? Okay, I'm I'm not gonna skip Adele. Sorry, well, Adele we aren't gonna have to play. I still have a 30 gambit. Guess we're doing some lower keys then. There aren't any high key players right now. Gambit. Gambit just always goes wrong with bolstering. You just always pull the Goliaths and you just wipe. 
Too hot here in Cyprus? Oh, I can imagine. It's hot even here. I can't even imagine how hot it is in Cyprus. <laughs> today actually, uh, today's supposed to be a bit colder. Because it was really hot the last couple of days. But today it's supposed to be, let's see. It's also like really, like when I, in the morning it was really nice. Like no clouds and nothing. And now it's super cloudy and I think it's going to be like thunder and rain and everything. And it's 26 degrees. What's that supposed to be? Hmm. My little brother's girlfriend is a dentist, well not a dentist, but um, like she does dentist, dent uh, like teeth cleaning. I'm sure it has a word. In English like she, she's not allowed to like fix holes but she's like cleaning teeth you know like professional cleaning what's it called dental hygienist there we go yeah my my brother's girlfriend is a dental hygienist and she uh, did a dental hygiene for me today and I've I've honestly like I'm not sure if she's uh, I'm not sure if she's trying a bit more because she knows me or if she always does it this way because she I've never in my life had a dental hygienist be this uh, gentle. Like usually, usually when I go to the dentist and they clean my teeth, it hurts more than filling your teeth because they yank you around and then it's like super cold and you have water in your fucking like the back of your throat that you're just like almost throwing up because there's water everywhere and then they they put this like cold water thing that spritzes out water on the same tooth like for a really long time so you feel like your tooth is gonna fall out because it's freezing <laughs> but she's like she's super gentle and super nice and she does it like amazingly <laughs> so i really appreciate her <laughs> what dentist do you usually go to? I don't know. I feel like... Don't you feel like sometimes cleaning your teeth actually hurts? Because I... I don't think I've ever... Until I went to my brother's girlfriend. Like, until then... I always felt like it really hurts. Like, more than having actually, like, I always felt like cleaning your teeth hurts more than doing anything else. Like, even fixing a hole or extracting a, te a tooth or something. I always felt like, what the fuck are you doing with my teeth? You're supposed to clean them, not fucking kill them. <laughs> but yeah, this, uh, this new one that I have, my brother's girlfriend, she's doing an amazing job. It doesn't hurt at all. It's great. And then I realized maybe all of them should be doing it this way. You know? Maybe she's not actually doing something super special. Maybe she's just doing it normally. And everyone else is like a butcher or something. <laughs> I've had braces. I think that might be the thing because when I had braces as well, Usually, um, like I went to a dentist that specializes in, um, in braces, right? Because I had these Invisalign things. And when you have Invisalign, you have these like really tiny like bits on your teeth where the braces like get like hold on to, right? And whenever they needed to remove them, I felt like they are just like killing my teeth i don't know dude and then you have to clean your teeth a few times but usually it does like the dentist that does your braces usually cleans your teeth as well and then i just have this feeling that maybe a dentist that is specialized on braces is not specialized at cleaning teeth so they just do it both and then they just want to be done quick or something i don't fucking know what's wrong with them <laughs> but yeah the dentist or the hygienist that would clean my teeth at the braces 
Dentists would always, like, do it horribly. I don't know. <laughs> my gum line is really high, but, uh... Well, I'm not sure if it's my gum line. It's basically just my, 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 um... What's it called? The flesh on your teeth. Your gums. Yeah, my gums are, like, pretty retreated. Because, I don't know, I guess my, um, my teeth are weird. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> She said that you like that just means that your teeth can be more sensitive to like cold and hot stuff, which my teeth are. But that shouldn't make the cleaning hurt. Cause I have that. Teeth flesh, yeah. <laughs> Cause my gums are pretty high. Uh and I'm really sensitive to like cold and, and hot stuff. But yeah, the cleaning actually didn't hurt at all. When she did it, at least. <laughs> Every dentist is specialized in torture. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we've we've got like the things they taught us in the past were just all wrong. Because my, like my new dentist also says that you're not supposed to clean your teeth more than twice a day, unless it's like, um, like an exception because you do something special or whatever. But you sh you're not supposed to clean your teeth more than, like you're supposed to clean them twice a day, right? But you're not supposed to clean them more than twice because apparently that's not actually really good for your teeth to do that. Especially because people always, um, tend to clean their teeth immediately after eating, which is not actually good. Especially if you've been eating um, something that is um, sour. What's the word? So basically, if, you, if you've been drinking like orange juice or Coke or you've been eating something acidic, yeah, that's the word. If you've been eating or drinking anything acidic, you're not supposed to clean your teeth right after. She told me if if I want to drink orange juice in the morning, I should clean my teeth before, and then I can eat after, which is also something that that you never heard. like. People always told you that you have to brush your teeth after eating, which is always. And then she also told me that um, I might also want to use like a normal toothbrush once a day instead of the electric one. Because it's easier on your teeth as well to use a normal one. And Ashley just told me a bunch of stuff. It all makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, I do think in the past people just told you weird stuff about your teeth. And then people just didn't do it because it was too ridiculous anyway. It is true. If you if if you brush your teeth and then you want to drink orange juice afterwards, this actually tastes so bad. <laughs> Do not allow the beauty of Tazavesh to distract you from our shared purpose. Uh, but yeah, I think my my gums are receded over because that's just how it is. I think some. Some gums just do that. She also told me that I, I tend to get, um, what is it called? You know, the thing that happens on your teeth that is not actually hurtful, but you're supposed to remove it once in a while. Is it actually called two stone? Plague, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> plague, plague, plague. Yeah, that's what, they, what they're removing when you go to a dental hygienist, right? And my teeth apparently do that a lot. Like, they create plague really easily. And my friends and people were saying, oh, don't you clean your teeth a lot? Like, what the fuck? But apparently it's um, how your saliva is made out of. Like, because every person's saliva is a bit different. Depends on what you eat, I guess, and whatever. So depending on your saliva... Um... It can, like, create more plague or less plague or whatever, so... Somehow I just... 
have really bad saliva apparently. That creates like... <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be a genetic thing, yeah. I don't know. And then it's also, usually it happens a lot of like the lower part of your front teeth at the back. Because that's where your saliva gets created. Like here at the, at the front. And that's why you usually have a lot at the back side of your bottom front teeth. Apparently. All right. Let's do it. And then what is this, like a sad song playlist or what? <laughs> Why are we so sad? Five, four, three, two, one. Think I'm receding receipts if you brush your teeth too hard, use a brush that's too hard. Yep. I mean your gum receding has apparently many different reasons, and it depends on the person, right? It's true that you're not supposed to brush your teeth with, like... Like, you're not supposed to kill your teeth while you brush them and press super hard or whatever. Obviously. But it's also true that some people are just prone to have that more than others, you know? Like, some people can religiously brush their teeth with the softest toothbrush ever and do all the things, and it still just happens, you know? Oh, our tank died. I'm all, I mean, because I'm also, I also changed all of my stuff for it to be like more sensitive, you know. I'm using this uh, different. Oh shit. Like, instead of a normal electric toothbrush, I'm using this, uh, what is it called? Uh, like the one that is doing these pulsing motions instead of, um, instead of turning. I don't know what it's called. But that one is much better. For sensitive teeth, apparently. Oh, we got another one. Oh no! Mr. Rogue! You have one job! The Warlock's suppressing Reign of Fire? You stand them up. <laughs> We got the blind. We did it. Bogo. <laughs> Sorry, I distracted you with my dentist talk. <laughs> Wait, where's our tank going? Oh, he's doing this. Oh my god, I'm stuck. Oh man, oh no. We have a fish stick. Dude, why am I so stuck? Can I get out of here? <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. I saw Sfia killed uh, the Jailer. Is he gonna stop playing Wana forever or... <laughs> or was, what, does he want to stick around a little bit? Anyone know by any chance? Killing well? Or what's the plan? Nice. Maybe we kill off this one skill banner so we can unblind the other one. I guess we just solo it after. We have to go fast because we killed Woe. We're gonna have to kill this. Okay. Thanks for four months, uh, Rob Tashi. What's up? Missing the Moonkin days? Oh, I miss the Moonkin days too. Oh, where did our tank go? I'm a bit confused. Oh, he thought we were invis or what? I guess he didn't know that the skill bender was still to see it. <laughs> Maybe they buff Moonkins? Incredibly unlikely. Incredibly unlikely. <laughs> Thanks for turning me nine, Asmaya. What's up? How your fares the might of the but uh, let's just um, keep inhaling you that juicy copium. <laughs> Thanks for turning me nine. What's up? Wow. Burn into lopers. No, it's not. It's not Andy. It's somebody else. Wait, can we not stand this? Oh my, my damage. Gamer, what's up? Hey, Stricken! Uh, 
Uh, what was our MDT? Did I even open it? I don't see it anymore. Whatever, I'm saving Infernal. Oh, we feared one, okay. So. Hello, Michaels. Seria's <laughs> arrogance will be her downfall. The quaking. Are we lasting this? I guess we are. Oh, you have a talent for I see already triggered. Love it. This was found among the ruins of the Black Empire. Yes. Rain of fire, rain of oh we killed Vi. This is through the wall? Yeah, fuck. I saw it. That was an invisible line, but there was no way the shaman could have seen it. Because he was further behind. That was pretty dumb. Thanks for five months self destruct. What's up? How are you? <laughs> Alright, enjoy Black Label. Have a nice rest of your day. Oh. Good night, good night. What do you mean, uh, Rike again? How you, how uh, how are you doing that? Oh shit! I tanked that. What shit? We almost pulled through. Thanks for 47, Trim V. What's up? Did you have a nice weekend? Some chaos building this. Yeah, we were watching football. Yesterday, uh, it was fun. The one thing, like, <laughs> I'm not the biggest like football fan. Like, I like watching it, but um, the one thing that annoys me a bit about football—well, annoying—it's a—it's the wrong word, I guess. But the thing that I that I don't like about football is the fact that there's just so many like breaks in between the actual playing. And my attention span is very short. Whenever they are playing, then it's obviously interesting and things are happening. But there's just 10 seconds of gameplay and then there's two minutes of break. And 10 <laughs> seconds gameplay, two minutes break, you know? <laughs> and that's just annoys me about football. If you compare it to soccer, for example, obviously, European football or like soccer is uh, not very entertaining uh, most of the time, but at least they're always like playing, you know? 
So there's always, like, you can technically always pay attention to something. But yeah, I mean, obviously most of the time there's nothing interesting happening on soccer, so that's also another thing. Yeah, it's just the fact that I'm like, I'm looking, like I'm watching it, and then there's a break, and then I just lose interest and I look at something else or think about something else, and then uh, it's, I'm already gone, you know, like my brain's already gone at that point. <laughs> hey Andy, what's up? Yeah, same, Kimo. <laughs> same. Cannoneers, blast them to pieces. What a word, Cabo. Let us hasten your demise. We've thrown out the big guns. Yeah, no, it was it was American football <laughs> that I watched yesterday. Yeah, we have like a European football league here now, which is for for European standards, it's pretty uh, famous now. Like compared to how it was before, obviously football is like still not very famous at all in Europe, but <laughs> but this football league is is definitely getting some attention now. I think that's cool. That's a tail. No, come on. I walked away, I swear. I saw the tail. I saw it. Oh, you can dwarf it. Okay, nice. I walked away. Yeah. I just don't get soccer, how there is all the acting about being fouled. I mean, it's really obvious why that is a thing. That happens in other sports too. It's not only soccer where people exaggerate their injuries. It also happens in handball, for example. The reason why people exaggerate their injuries is because of how there aren't enough referees to see everything. And then sometimes you will get fouled. And if you don't react enough, they might completely just miss it. And that's obviously not fair, right? Like, let's say you got super, like... Like, someone, like, kicked you into the, in the fucking nuts. And you just try to act cool that nothing happened. And then no referee saw it. And then this person's not getting punished. Because you pretended that nothing happens. So by, by acting, you... You basically call attention to yourself, and uh, referees will look. You know, that's that's the that's just the explanation. <laughs> and then obviously people will abuse this as well. Like, cause this is cause I played handball in the past. And I would never say anything when someone hurt me or did something or fouled me or whatever. Because I'm tough, obviously. <laughs> but then my, my coach said, listen, Caroline, you have to fucking scream if someone touches you and fouls you or whatever. 
Because otherwise, how is the referee supposed to see or, or notice? And then it totally made sense to me. It's like, oh, yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> Obviously, this is more of an issue in amateur sport, because... If it's professional sports, then usually you have enough referees to see things. And you have cameras and whatever. Hmm, the blink. Hey, <laughs> Janine, what's up? <laughs> you have cameras, the referee sees all. Well, no, not really. No, because in soccer, the fact that the referee can look at the camera and at the replay is really new. They didn't have that for a long time. Like in American football, if the referees were not sure about something, they can just check the replay, right? But that's something they didn't introduce in soccer for a long time. Because they wanted to keep the old rules and whatever, you know, they didn't want to... Uh, I don't know. So they never wanted to check replays, ever. So it's, it's, it's really not true that the referee sees all. It's just, it's just not true. Until they started using the, the replays, and even then it's the referee's decision if he wants to see the replay or not, right? Because if the ref referees didn't see anything, like, if they don't think there's something that they missed, then they're still not gonna check. But yeah, this is like a new-ish thing. In the past they were not checking replays. So if the referee missed something, the referee missed something. It is what it is, you know. <laughs> But yeah, this is about, like, obviously when I was explaining my situation, how it was in the past, then it was more like a, like when you're in like an amateur league, then you're not gonna have a million cameras recording replays and a million referees, right? <laughs> you're gonna have one single referee, and if that referee misses something, he missed it. That's it. I am chaos locked. Guards, remove these pests. But yeah, like the fact that it makes sense is just obvious, right? Like people think that all people who play soccer are just like drama queens or like whatever. But obviously there's a reason that this is happening, right? That people are exaggerating their injuries and stuff like it just goes back to that thing that I explained where you need to not to say that some people are assholes when they do that like I agree that some people are assholes when they uh, when they exaggerate their injuries but then at the same time it also makes sense uh, at least in the history of the sport the tools of creation at my command lying ruin the rams i can feel them all the power of the first ones mine to 
And I think it also has something to do with um, just very, like, the fewer things are allowed, the more this is gonna happen too, I guess, right? Depending on which sport it is that you're playing, um, something very minor is already considered a foul. Uh, while in other sports, you can do whatever you want and it's still not a foul. Like, for example, uh, hockey, right? Ice hockey, I think you can do almost anything. <laughs> it's fine, you know? <laughs> oh. Oh my. Guess I just got killed basically? I'm not sure if I survived this. It's not four stacks. Okay, I'm alive. So yeah, if, if the, the, the fewer things are allowed in the sport, the more extreme it's gonna be as well, right? Because if someone can't even touch you, and it's already a foul, then obviously it's much harder for the referee to see that. Uh, and then additionally... You're gonna have a hard time, like, kind of showing it or seeing it as a referee as well. And if you play a sport where almost anything is allowed, then the foul has to be pretty severe for it to be punished, and therefore it's like, yeah, whatever, you know? <laughs> and I would say football or soccer is definitely a sport where there aren't very many things allowed when it comes to fouls. And you cannot take the, the thing, for example, like the shirt, you cannot pull on the shirt. You cannot uh, touch someone's face. Whenever you want to take some, like whenever you want to take the football from somebody, then you're not allowed to touch the person. You're only allowed to touch the ball, basically. <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> the first ones hate these artifacts for good reason. They are not meant for us. I, am I just followed to tell you it's football, not soccer. Have a good stream. Okay, listen. We're right now we're talking about football and soccer, so it would be incredibly confusing if I say football to both. I I'm not sure. I'm not sure why people care so much about the words. Like, who the fuck cares? We have a second word for it, and it's called soccer, right? So might as well just call it that. If people are gonna be confused otherwise. I mean, I always call it football as well, right? But... When I talk to not the American people. Maybe we should pull a different trash bag. We've also discussed a lot now. You have to drop these casts from the Fishmaster because this hurts a lot. sure about this chaining thing I'm just gonna like the reason like and we're chaining and it just makes us take longer to kill it because it's bolstering right but it's 
This should be fun. 30 seconds. We need one more mob. We should just kill a slow mob here. Or is it one more? Surely it's only one more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the whole world is calling it football, but yeah, okay, let's be American. Oh my god, why does it matter? <laughs> I don't understand. Because American football is called football. Like, you just can't deny that, right? That it's, that it's, there's, the sport is called that way. It's called American football, right? So it just ended up... So in America, when someone says football, they mean American football. Because they don't really have... Uh, they don't. They don't really uh, play soccer as much or European football. I don't even know how to call it now. <laughs> so they just came up with another word to make sure it's not confusing. And American football is not very famous anywhere else, right? Or at least not as famous as as it is in America. Like here in Europe. Um, the way we deal with it usually is that we call, like, for example, in German, you say Fußball, which is the literal translation of football, but you use the German word, right? You just, like, translate it. But when we talk about American football, then we say football, like the English word. So for, for us, it's pretty easy to distinguish. I don't think you can gate up there. You have to jump. But <laughs> Wait, where can, how can you gate? Where? I don't think you can gate. I don't think I've ever managed to gate up there. <laughs> hey, Wang Anfi, what's up? But yeah, so for us, it's really easy, right? Because we all have different languages, right? So I'm sure um, French people, for example, they say the French word for football, like they translate the word. And then when they, when they talk about American football, they just say football, the English word. So it's, it's really easy for us to distinguish the two sports because we just use the English word. Um, because obviously football is like an American thing or it started in America, so it makes sense to use the word uh, football. But um, soccer does not have like an origin, like kind of like language. Like it's not a German sport or something, right? Um, so that's why there is no word you can use because football is football right the american football but soccer or like the european football that one does not have a name a universal name right because in each language it's called different it does have the same meaning in every language but you still use the different languages So I think it makes more sense for the non-American football to be called different than the American football to be called different. Because they have that word, like it's just the same everywhere. <laughs> In France, soccer is called football. But the English words? From DK? And yeah, rugby is not football. <laughs> Wait, you, you use the English word football for soccer? Really? Huh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Hmm. So you don't have the word translated? Huh. That's, that's interesting. I thought almost every language is translating it somehow. Is it called football because it's only an American sport? I think, I think it's called football because it originated in America because it's it's a version of, I think the over, like it comes from rugby, right? But it's like a specific, like it has specific rules and stuff that are more specified, and that's why it's called American football. Like it literally comes from America. Yeah, I don't know what Australian football is called. Wait, don't you call it differently anyway? Don't you have a different name for it? If 
Football is called soccer only in the US, and American football is rugby with fluffy pillows. Okay, everyone should just calm the fuck down. <laughs> it's fine to call the sport soccer to clarify what you're talking about. And if you don't agree, then you need to get yourself checked, okay? Like, go take a deep breath, drink a glass of milk or something. <laughs> like, calm the hell down. <laughs> We were literally we were literally talking about the two sports. Imagine me sitting here comparing American football to soccer and using the two calling both football. Who the fuck would understand what I'm talking about then? No one. Imagine I was like, "Oh, in football you do this, but in football you do the other thing." I was like <laughs> This is a THD-like take, Caro. How is this a THD-like take? I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm honestly so fucking confused. Okay, if you compare American football to the other football, then what do you say? Please, please enlighten me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can say American football versus just football. But then people still get confused because in America, they don't say American football, right? Like, they obviously just say football. So I guess it's still confusing. But if you specify American football, I guess people know exactly what you mean. It's just when you say football without anything, then people are still just confused. Are we in America right now? No, but we're talking fucking English. And there's people in my chat who's, who are from America. I mean, I, I just don't understand why people are so upset about the word. Like, I really just don't get it. <laughs> and people say, oh, no one calls it soccer anywhere in America. Yeah, it's because we don't fucking speak English other in the UK. Soccer is a fucking English word. Of course I don't say soccer in German. Because <laughs> it's not our word for fucking football. <laughs> Who cares? It's the same thing in Australia. They call Australian football just football. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? I think it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> probably, Valinor, probably. <laughs> In New Zealand, we call football soccer. Wait, like the foot, the normal foot, the foot football? The one where you use your feet? Really? You call it soccer in New Zealand? We're Googling this now. History.com. Why do some people call it soccer? Known to the most of the rest of the world as football or football. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. The game is almost exclusively referred to as soccer in the United States. But many Americans may be surprised to learn that our outlier moniker... What? I'm so confused. This doesn't even make sense. Okay, we're looking for a different article. This one seems to be a clickbait thing. <laughs> and you know where you go for the best and most accurate information on the internet? 
That's right, Reddit. <laughs> Why is the word soccer hated so much? I'm probably going to get downloaded for this, but please hear me out first. How many people actually get genuinely offended by the word soccer? Personally, I call it soccer because of where I've grown up and where I live, and I've always called it soccer. I don't get mad or anything when people call it football. And another question is to the people who hate the word. Do you know the meaning and the history of it? <laughs> then someone says the word itself just sounds shitty. Like nostalgia. Or to some people, moist. <laughs> Association football fans who hate other football codes and in, in a fascistic little way, excuse me, want to own the word football and hate the word soccer. I think that's honestly it. <laughs> you just want to own the word. That has to be it. <laughs> Everyone else, like 99% of people, realize it's a perfectly useful way to refer to the sport. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And you are the, fa the fascists, okay? You're the fascists, I'm the... <laughs> I'm the... I'm the reasonable person, yeah? Okay, I'm just assuming. Uh... Incidentally... It is widely used in England. The hugely popular Sky Sports Saturday Roundup program is called Soccer Saturday and no one complains? Wait, seriously? There's a program called Soccer Saturday in the UK and no one gives a shit? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Nostalgic for some moist soccer. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so How much for your friends of Nefora. Thank you so much. Football is like a religion in the UK. We get very upset when Americans just arbitrarily change its name. Well, they, they change other names too, though. Do you get upset about that as well? If they call crisps, chips, whatever, for example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I think the UK is just mad that they had that they owned so much land in the past and now they they only have this tiny island and they're upset that other people speak the same language as they do and change it up. <laughs> same with the French as well. <laughs> the French are always so upset when they hear other people talk French. Like Canadian Canadian French or whatever. Like it's not real French. Sorry. Sorry, I'm speaking my language that I grew up in. You were the ones fucking coming here. <laughs> no. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> a podcast. Oh, we should talk about this subject in a podcast for sure. No healer challenge with Smokamok. Oh yeah, I'm in. Nagani. <laughs> I'm not even French and Canadian French offense me so bad. I I think it's cute when there's different uh, verses of a language. Thanks for 58 months, Astro Moons. I mean, I get the same thing, right? Because I live where I live here, we speak a German dialect. That is pretty, like, it's like pretty heavy dialect that also kind of changes certain rules with grammar. <laughs> so it's not only very um, different, it also is just wrong sometimes. 
I sometimes really should just use wrong grammar. And that's just how it is here. But anyway, whenever I talk that dialect people, or some people, get really upset. Say it's like not real German or whatever. And I always am like, oh, who like I mean, I grew up with this language, so it is what it is, right? And isn't it kind of cute when there's different versions of your own language? I always thought it's interesting. I, th I think different dialects and different accents and whatever is really interesting. And the more different dialects there are, the cooler it is, no? It's, it's, it's sometimes difficult to understand each other, but... <laughs> I'm French and all, what do you say about the French is cliche? Yeah, I'm not sure. I have encountered a few French people in my life and they all have confirmed the stereotypes. So since, a se <laughs> since I now have a sample size of at least three people, I will just conclude that all of the stereotypes are true. <laughs> because that's how statistics work. It is true though, come on. Like some French people are just, I just, uh, it's, it's not just French people, there's more than, than just the French. I think Americans do this as well, by the way. I think French and Americans are very like, what is it called? Like nationalist, uh, is that, is that what, it, what it's called? Like very proud of their like culture and lands and language. Patriotic, yeah, that's the word. They're very patriotic. And that sometimes creates, because I don't think there's anything wrong with being patriotic, but some, some people are patriotic and also simultaneously despise anything that is not them, you know? Because you can be patriotic and still acknowledge other nations and be like happy that they exist. You know, you can be like, oh nice, I'm like French and I love being French and I love the French everything. You don't have to simultaneously all say, oh, but Germans suck, you know? But there's just some people that it, it goes really easy. <laughs> like, it's really easy to hate everything other than yourself if you're very patriotic, right? It's just the easiest thing to do. But yeah, not saying that everyone does that, but... I think patriotism definitely comes with the... Uh, comes with that sometimes. <laughs> Thanks for 22 months, Big Bond. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the funniest story I have about French people was when, when I was working at this cottage, because um, my dad had rented it for the summer, and you, you can literally not drive up there with a car, like you have to hike up there. And it's in Italy, in South Tyrol, but it's really close to the Austrian border. So this cottage is in the mountains between Italy and Austria. And there were two people who, who came there. Oh, and my dad was like, like you could eat something and drink something and stuff, right? Like it was kind of like a, like a tiny mountain restaurant or whatever. So people hiked up there, got something to eat and left or whatever. And then there's like these two French people that came up and they just sat down like on our table without like saying anything. And then they started like eating their own lunch. Like they just like unpacked their lunch or whatever. And like we like walked, like my dad walked, I was like, hey, what's up? Hey, this is like a private thing. You're not allowed to eat here. You can order something if you want, but you're not allowed to eat your own lunch here. <laughs> and they're like, oh, sorry. Yeah, we only speak French. Like they said this in French, obviously. And my dad speaks uh, Italian, German and some Spanish. And French is also a Roman language, so usually you can just speak Italian really, really slowly and the French people might understand a word or two, right? And also the other way around. So he was trying to speak Italian with them, but they were just like, nah, only French. <laughs> so he, so he, uh, he asked me to speak English to them. So I went out and started speaking English to them. I was like, hey, what's up, guys? 
you know, this is like a private thing. And they kept speaking French to me again, and said that they only speak French or whatever. And, <laughs> like, I, I, I honestly wouldn't mind if they are like that, but considering the location of where we were, like, considering we were in Italy, to the border of Austria, like, France was nowhere close. <laughs> France was so far away, yeah? And the fact that they were just, like, refusing to communicate. Because they clearly... It's not that they only wanted to speak French. They literally just didn't uh, want to communicate. Because they clearly understood what we were trying to say, right? They're not stupid. They totally understood what we were saying. <laughs> and they just refused to fucking leave and just hit behind the the french language thing where it's like no we don't we only speak french like shut the fuck up <laughs> you totally know what i'm saying <laughs> selective hearing <again. laughs> but yeah obviously those two french people are not the representation of all french people but you know <laughs> The Italians sometimes do that too. I'm not sure if Italians are as patriotic as the French are, but Italians sometimes have have this like as well. The Italians sometimes come to South Tyrol, which is where I live. We speak German here, but we're from Italy, right? And they come here and uh, they will sometimes tell us that we're supposed to speak Italian because we're in Italy. And we always have to um, explain to them that our first language is not actually Italian, but we still belong to Italy. And that's just how it is, you know? You can blame the fucking uh, fascists, right? Like, they wanted to fucking have part of Austria. Like, what the fuck? How is it my fault? <laughs> Sorry, I guess. <laughs> Maybe girls, yeah. I also encountered a rude French person when we drove through France. We were uh, we were driving through France to get to the UK with a bus with school. Uh, I was like 18 only, I guess, at that point. Maybe 17 even. And we drove through France and we stopped at the gas station, like literally next to the highway. Like, I would say next to a highway, it makes sense that you would speak English or something that is not French, considering that surely there's a lot of people who just drive through, right? Well, anyway, so we stopped there and a friend of mine, a child, like 17 years or whatever, uh, bought something, gave her 20 euros, and, she, and it was like 7 euros or something. And she only gave her 3 euros back. So she kept 10 euros. And um, <laughs> my friend was like, I think she just gave me 10 euros. Like, I'm missing 10 euros. I gave her 20. And like, we looked at her, it's like, hey, my friend gave you 20. Uh, he's still missing 10. And she was just like, directly looking at us, speaking French. You know? We were speaking English, and she was, like, speaking French to us, and she was like, blah, 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 French, French, French. And then she, like, left, kind of-ish. And we're like, dude, <laughs> we're missing 10 fucking euros. And then some other lady came by, and then they spoke French to each other, and then she gave us a 10 euro back. But she refused to say anything in English this whole time. <laughs> Where I'm just like, come on, dude. What, are you going to rip off fucking children or what? <laughs> Thanks for one year, Ali. What's up? Good morning. <laughs> yes, there's no national language. Wait, what do you mean there's no national language? Isn't it just English? Do you not have an official national language? Mm. 
I mean, surely you do. Surely it's English. Or is it not? No, oh, no, it doesn't. The United States does not have an official language at the federal level. The most commonly used language is English, which is de facto national language. Hmm. Also the only language spoken at home by the great majority of the US. But how does it work if you don't have like a proper national language when it comes to like official things? Like what about documents or whatever? Can you just ask him to give them to you in a different language or how does that work? Everything's in multiple languages, huh? That's interesting. That sounds really weird. I'm sure that costs a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's also useful for people that don't speak English. But then at the same time, I'm sure it's very expensive with all of the processes and stuff when, when you have to bring people that speak different languages and stuff and write different languages and whatever. It's not kind of weird. I'm sure it's expensive. Because here where I live, for example, we have two official languages. English and it, uh, German and Italian. So whenever you go to an office, any sort of document you get, like any official document, is uh, you, it's either G German or Italian. And you can ask, like, I want this in German or I want this in Italian. Or sometimes it's even just written both on the same piece of paper. But uh, you're not really allowed to, s like, you can't ask for this document to be in English, for example, because it's not an official language. So it's just like, that's how it is, you know? If you don't speak German or Italian, you just can't read the document. <laughs> Which is a bit fucked up, but then at the same time, then it's just your responsibility to get it translated for you, right? So if you don't understand German or Italian, you take the document, go to whoever and let them translate it, right? Like then it's your responsibility, which I guess is fine, right? Don't blame people of a country to speak the language of their country. I mean, I never... I wasn't blaming the lady to, for speaking French. I was blaming her for not trying to communicate with us when we clearly did not speak French. <laughs> like, I think there's a very big difference. S sometimes, um, sometimes you just don't speak another language, right? And that's obviously fine. Like... <laughs> I'm not gonna go into into France and demand that you speak German to me or whatever. Like, obviously, I'm not gonna do that. But I think it's very clear that some people just don't even attempt to communicate because there's so many ways you can communicate even if you don't speak the same language. Like, you can you can point at things, you can show things. You know, like there's like there's so many things you can do. But when someone literally looks me straight into the eye and says that they only speak French and continue to just like speak French without attempting to like show anything, then obviously that's fucking rude, right? So I'm not blaming them for speaking French. I'm blaming them for not trying to communicate, <laughs> which is pretty clear. Even in Australia, government documents have to be translated for people who cannot speak English. Yeah, but not by the government, right? Or how does it work? <laughs> My ghost. Have you guys 
guys, like my, my friend, um, uh, my brother and his girlfriend, not the dentist, the other one, uh, <laughs> the teacher, the, the religion teacher, <laughs> and my brother, they uh, started playing this uh, Wikipedia game, which I thought was really cool. I never heard of this before. Um, so basically the way it works is that you both open up a page on Wikipedia about something. It can be anything, right? So let's say you open a page about uh, South Tyrol. And then um, someone comes up with a completely unrelated word, like uh, monkey, okay? And then you have to click links on Wikipedia, like any kind of links that put you to another Wikipedia page, until you find the Wikipedia page for monkey. And whoever is faster wins. Right, so you just have to click yourself through all of the links uh, that are like in a South Tyrol site, and then you move to another and another and another and another until you finally get the monkey, which I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. Sounds shit! <gasps> Excuse you. <laughs> What is going on with this group? Smug's group is not uh, filling up very fast, is it? They don't want to do a key without a healer, apparently. <laughs> what the hell? Hellrider, uh, if you want to start playing the game again, you can always start playing WoW. I think WoW is a game that you can just always start playing. Like, you don't need to w play in a, at a specific time, because in the past, I think World of Warcraft was much more dependent on, like, an expansion or something. Uh, where it's like, oh, you need to start when the expansion come out, comes out, because otherwise you're going to be, like, super behind or whatever. But now that World of Warcraft is more of a seasonal game... Uh, and each season only lasts like four or five months, six months, right? You can just kind of play whenever and you're going to be able to catch up to everyone else pretty fast. And there's catch up systems and all that kind of stuff. So you can just start playing whenever you want, really. Like you don't have to wait for anything. You just start playing and uh, you do the thing, right? And finding a guild, uh, I don't really... I don't really have any tips on how to find a guild. I only really have tips on how to find, to climb up in guilds and become like a mythic raider or something. I did make a YouTube video about that if you want to check it out. But other than that, you just have to apply. Like, it's like finding a job. <laughs> you just go to like Raider.io or WoW Progress and you look at the guilds. If you're not willing to change your server, like if you want to stay on your server, then look at the guilds on your server and just apply to a bunch of them. And if you're willing to change the server for a different guild, then uh, look at WoW Progress at all English or EU servers or whatever. Select the language that you want to speak in your guild and then just apply there. Thanks for 17 months, Hunter Rang, what's up? Hey, Nerkind. Okay, bear back one second. Uh, if you guys want to join our no healer key, make sure you queue up because uh, apparently we're struggling. <laughs> so give me a minute or two. My, my um, stream deck doesn't work. Hmm.
So I have to pick up my friend later. And uh, since I'm a geographical genius, geography, geog yeah, whatever. She sent me <laughs> she sent me a video on how to get there. Amazing. Geosmart. I'm Geosmart, yeah. <laughs> Linguistic genius. <laughs> no. Maybe Kuros, maybe. <laughs> From where are you sitting point north? I am pretty sure north is... Here. No. Yeah. It's really... <laughs> it's actually... Pretty easy to spot... <laughs> the directions where I live because I'm in a fucking valley right there's mountains to the left and to the right so it's pretty easy to point to the directions if there were no mountains I would be lost <laughs> I'm actually checking now is there actually a compass app or something compass app Checking. <laughs> yeah, I'm super done with directions too. <laughs> Thank you, Archangel. Have a nice day. Yeah, apparently, I'm not sure if this is true. Someone just told me this, so it could just be made up. But apparently, um, women. Uh, on average, have a different, um, like they, they think of directions differently compared to like an average man. Obviously, this can vary, but apparently, men are thinking of directions like in, in 3D in their mind, kind of. So, when you, when you drive in a circle in a city, they will realize oh we just drove in a circle you know like they will just like think of it as like a 3d kind of model of the place that they were at while a lot of women use geographical markers to indicate where they currently are and that obviously creates situations where um if you've been driving in a city you don't necessarily know did I just drive in a circle or did I drive straight or did I, what did I do? And then if you only use markers, it's it's hard for you to put it all together in your head afterwards because you use uh, mark the marker system instead of the three <laughs> D <3D> system. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm doing that. Okay, just open an advertisement. Perfect. Yeah, that might, might very well be why sometimes men are better with directions. Okay, turns out north is like here. Okay, I thought it's further back. Wait, this is there's no way this is true. How does it work? This is, there's no way this is true. How 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 you how do you calibrate this? Unable to determine your location. Yeah, I don't understand how this works. Am I supposed to turn this towards north? It doesn't work. Am I supposed to point this at north? <laughs> this is complicated.
Yeah, this compass is lying. <laughs> Sorry, but this compass is just lying. The girlfriend of a friend of mine once didn't fight back to our tents on a festival while standing on the road directly next to them. <laughs> Not sure about that landmark, I think, for women. No, but it's true because, um, like, if you think about landmarkers, in a sense, it can be very distorted. Like, you could be literally next to where you started, but you're seeing it from a, from a different angle, and so you don't recognize it in your head, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's literally the problem if you, if you remember positions with landmarkers instead of putting a whole picture together in your head. Because obviously you're very zoomed in when you're standing somewhere. Like if you stand somewhere, you realize I'm standing here. And then you look at the things around you and you recognize this place. But then if someone would pick you up and put you like a hundred meters to the left and turn you around, then all of a sudden you don't see those same landmarkers anymore that you saw before. And you might not recognize that you're literally right next to it. You know what I mean? Unless there's like really big indicators, like a mountain. That's why mountains are good for me. Because mountains are really big, you can see them from anywhere. <laughs> so it's much easier to orientate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. That's why I always get lost in dungeons in, in World of Warcraft. Thanks for two months to be go. Yeah, I always get lost in dungeons and in raids. I can be doing a raid for like a few months and I still wouldn't be able to know where to go. It, it is a problem. The Forsworn have cut a swath through most of our forces. Vanquish their rear guard while I confront devils. Go in service. Vampiric and brave. This is gonna be a big vanguard, unfortunately. I forgot to use a pot. Definitely never follow me in next dramas, that's that's for sure. So what's up? You were the paragon. Yeah, we're playing without a healer. Apparently. All this time it was you who led the force war. Your blind adherence to the path would have doomed us all. You left me no choice but to oppose you. You cannot force hide. Lord. See that the mortals do not interfere. Then Kurt and Brent.
Oh, we got Vi. Oh, shit. Right, looking good so far. Hello? Watch the quaking? Oh. Oh! oh. Let me send this. I think I'll inferno this still. Because we're looking a bit sketch. Ron, Ron, what did you do? Ron is sabotaging. Uh, I guess we don't have a knock or a grip to get this guy back. I guess we are supposed to stand close. Maybe I didn't need to infernal this. So late into the pool. Yeah, definitely. Definitely shouldn't have. But oh well. Hey Jackie, what's up? Listen to reason, devils. The Kyrian must Thank you, Michaels. Have a good one. Not so long as you command them. The Forsworn will forge a new path for Bastion.
That crater died super fast. Man, I know so little about I know so little about uh, Shadow Priest. I don't think I can help you with that one. I definitely know that there's uh, issues with the spec though. I'm still under the impression, like I still think that they should try and balance stacked AOE so every class um, can do stacked AOE properly. Because I think there's a few specs that just cannot do stacked AOE. Like if there's a lot of mobs that they're stacked, then they're, they just don't do a lot of damage. While other classes do a shit ton of damage. And I think that really creates a huge balancing issue in M+. And I think they should change that. They just Everyone should have a talent or something that makes it possible for them to do stack the OE damage. For eons, we have been told to purify ourselves. To let go of our memories, our identities, our loved ones. All in the name of service. And oh. what do we serve? An impotent arbiter, an oppressive law. Our sacrifices were made for nothing. Where the fuck is the skirmisher going? I think we all kind of used our damage. Hmm, I don't have uh, Infernal yet. This uh, Inquisitor hurts. Oh, smoke that. Fuck. I mean, they're really bolstered anyway, I guess. I'm just dead. I'm not that. No. Okay, we're totally fine. Nothing happened.
Yeah, like I don't, I personally don't mind if a class is like a, a little bit more complicated, like AOE rotation. But the problem is if the setup itself is difficult, like, because that just means it takes a long time. And as soon as it takes a long time, you're just going to be bad at stacked AOE because other classes don't need to set up for 10 seconds, you know? So I, I have nothing against rotations that are a bit more complicated, but at least the damage needs to happen fast, and then afterwards, to sustain the damage, it can be difficult, you know? Because they could just say, hey, if you press this button, you do instant damage, and then afterwards, if you want to sustain your damage, um, then you need to press a few more buttons, you know what I mean? But the problem is usually... The problem lies in the issue that some classes just need to press 10 buttons before they even start doing damage, while all the other classes don't need that, and then obviously everything's gonna be dead when you have set up everything. <laughs> I witness your demise. So then at that point, the difficulty of the setting up is irrelevant, because no matter, like, you, you might press all of your buttons correctly, in perfect order, and another class still does more damage, because they did their damage quicker. And that's obviously the problem then. And usually in the past, um, classes that, that needed to ramp, right? if you needed to ramp up your AoE damage, then usually you would out-damage classes at some point. Like, there were classes that did burst AoE, and then there were classes who did uh, ramp AoE. And at the start, the classes with burst obviously did more damage, but then eventually, the class with ramp will catch up and do more damage than the burst class, because their ramping damage is higher, like the ceiling of the damage is higher than the burst. But that's not realistically how it works anymore now. There's some classes who do a lot of burst and then they also do a lot of ramp damage. Because their cooldowns are so low. So they do a l instant damage and then when you started ramping, they have their cooldowns up again and they just press it again. Destro were like a, like a ramping class, for example. It's it's just that they um, they don't need so much time to ramp. First of all, like Destro were like just needs a million globals to ramp, and additionally, their their ceiling is just too high, right? But that's why Destro warlocks are not actually that good on super low keys. Like Destro is not always uh, the best spec. If you do low keys, if you do a plus 10, plus 15, whatever, then you're not gonna do the most damage. You're going left or right? Oh, we go right.
I guess I have to save in for an all. Where's my imp? Hello? I think she's dying so fast with four damage healers. I love it. Spell smock. No. I'll get it. What are kick bots? I mean, people are running scripts or bots that are kicking your spells. Are you? Is that actually true? Is that actually a thing? You see a problem in World's Drenner? Yeah, but it's not anymore now, right? Oh wait, I don't have an imp. That's why I'm interrupting go through. Makes sense now. Dead, I guess. Oh, smoke died. You all is killed. I got it. <laughs> hey, Willow, what's up? Hey, Mod. Okay. I'll put house stones at the top. As I peered into Uther's memories, what I saw shook me to the core. <laughs> I mean, if, if it means that they're gonna buff Moonkin, then uh, I'm all for deleting Destro. 
Or just delayed warlocks in general, honestly. Just the whole class. We have too many specs in the game anyway, right? Balancing is so hard because we have so many specs. Just delete it. That would be three specs that are gone. That no one likes anyway. Right? Alright, we're doing triple angel. I have pot in six. Let's do it. What could possibly go wrong? 45 bolstering. Nice. Well, bolstering is actually relevant. <laughs> I just wish my camera angle Five, would be better here. Four, three, two, one. Oh shit, he jumped out. That is not very good, is it now? Make sure we focus uh, the big guy. The clothes suit. I'm not even gonna immolate the other ones. Remember, they need to die at the same time. I'm chaos bolting, fuck it. Guys, don't kill him. Don't kill the low guy. Oh! Okay, we're looking good again. Looking good. Nice. Insane. Accept no! your defeat, Archon. I serve a far greater power now. With your spear in hand, I will take control Wait, it interrupted my food? But why? We only have one dispel, right? Wouldn't be me. What am I dispelling? I dispelled a monk. Killed her a bit earlier, but it's fine, I guess. I guess we dwarf the debuff here? Oh, we must spell how that works. I will strike you down. Do I have to dispel smock? Nah, right? Sure, he's fine. That was slightly close. Almost didn't manage.
That's a lot of debuffs, midget. Oh my god, how is how are they alive? Six debuffs. Oh no. Master spell. Oh. Nice. Plus two. Ooh, leech. That's not avoidance, though. Long have we believed that our mortal lives are burdens to be shed in the name of service. And yet. The deeds of mortals. Ooh, uh, are what socket. You have my gratitude. Once the jailer lies defeated. I can't ever play with imp. No one interrupts in my keys. Well, but you're not supposed to play with imp all the time. You're only supposed to, like, on this bus, for example, there's nothing to interrupt. Right? You only play imp when there's something to dispel and nothing to interrupt. So on this boss you play Imp, you can play Imp on Orifrian as well, to dispel the stump in case two people get hit. You use it on... Uh, uh, Theater of Pain... On um, Kulturok. You can also use it on uh, like the trash packs before, whenever there's a Soulbinder. Because Soulbinders put a debuff on it, on people, magic debuff. Mm, that does a lot of damage, but usually whenever there's a soulbound, there's also a lot to interrupt. So I usually only play imp if we have like a shaman, for example, because a shaman uh, has an interrupt, so you already have an additional interrupt. And I usually don't run imp if we have a priest, because priest can mass the spell anyway, and he doesn't have an interrupt, so. And then that's kind of it. Tassavesh. Oh yeah, and Tassavesh on a male boss, you can run it. Dispel the fear on T.O.P. The fear. Fear. Let me think. There's a fear in T.O.P. Fear in T.O.P. I can't think of any fear. Oh, you mean that puts a... Oh, it's not actually a fear. It's a debuff that puts a swirly underneath you. And if you stand inside the swirly, you will get feared. You can actually avoid that. So it's a, it's a curse on you. And every two seconds, it puts a swirly in, under the floor. So whenever the curse on you, you just wait until the swirly spawns. You move. You wait. You move. And the imp cannot dispel it. It's a curse. Imp can only dispel magic. Monk was kind of trolling, but he's still a cutie. <laughs> Agreed. I like his psy. We got our Feral Druid friend. What are we playing? Necrotic Wake. This one. Hmm. 
Ne prej fleksin. Nije nova da on. Ooh, we can play mass root and just actually no, I'm a Destro Warlock. We shouldn't be rooting those heads. <laughs> if I didn't die in a spear pool, I would have won overall. Well, it's not about overall. It's about doing the key in time. And I have to say, <laughs> I have to say, that is 10 seconds, 15, 20, 25 seconds. <laughs> to be fair, you're also male and I'm a range, so. <laughs> and I also have a pot. <laughs> Fucking warlock flares. Being proud of surviving things. <laughs> when they have a million defenses. <laughs> Died to miss kicks and aggro. Oh, surely that was not my fault. Oh, we, it's gone now. We can't check if this is true. I will just believe you. I will believe you. <laughs> yeah, Smok is streaming. Yep, yep. Ah, yet another of the Kyrian's loyal servants. Have you come here to be slaughtered as well? This temple was merely the first to fall. Soon, all of Bastion. You want me to pull? Are we pulling the the double shield dudes with the orbs? No, I don't think they said what they're gonna nerf with Survival Hunter. To be fair, I, I think MM is still like really good. Even if survival would be dead. MM just has some issues with surviving because they don't have verse. I don't like waiting for after the belch. Isn't that annoying? Isn't it worse to wait when we have time when speaking us? Yeah, I don't like waiting for the first AoE. I always think that's bad. Because then we spawn the small leaves and then they eat, they go in and it's like, ugh. Thanks for one here, Jablonski. What's up? Good morning. Five, oh yeah, it's 4th seven, of July. Three, True. Two, one. Well, happy... Almost Freedom Day, I guess? Close to Freedom-ish? Oh, Independence. Yeah, true. Yeah, you still have Independence. That's true. Yeah, hope you all have a nice holiday, guys. Enjoy, enjoy. So what do you do? I like having a barbecue and stuff. Oh, mm, barbecue! Mm. I do love barbecues. Those are some bolstered boys. Oh, Smokey! Oh.
Oh. I might have gotten fire locked. This guy is still very bolstered. Oh, his spell failed. We can uh, gate maybe? I can try. Oh, I'm gonna pull those. Frankly, that's a skill issue. I did put up a gate. Let's see if it works. Oh, my belt failed too. Oh fuck! I pulled. No, it's not Frankly, working. Wait, are they global aggro? Hmm, this is not good. <laughs> Go twenty-five. 25 it is. I will need another mind suit. <laughs> I could have just uh, stayed dead. <laughs> I can't need to just see the, the guy again. Yeah, I'm gonna pull these soldiers. Hmm, I should have just waited for the rest. I can't really come over. My belt. Failed. <laughs> okay, I'm looking good. We didn't actually activate the Goliath already, right? Okay, I get it. <laughs> Some of these guys. Sure, we all in melee. Let's hope Smok is gonna survive. No, poor Smok. Make sure we're healing him. Knocked him out of my rain of fire. Oh no. Yeah, I guess we can just keep them rooted. Okay, someone broke it. Is Kirin weapon streaming? Stitch flesh will be irked to know you destroyed his prize creation. Hey D, by the way, what's up? I am sure he will gladly take your limbs as we pay my
My bad. That was a coil. A coil that went really far. I mean, it shouldn't. I mean, it's too late now, but I mean, I don't think uh, the carrying weapons ever should have been as OP as they are. They should have just uh, nerfed the dungeon and let the weapons do less damage. the marauders I guess with gates no I don't use the mouse over macro for innervate uh, for emulate since it is a cast anyway I only use mouse over macros for stuff like interrupts Because you can cast it while... Like it's not even global, basically. We're not out of melee? Is Priest not in melee? Hey, I was not in that. That's 100% uh, a lie. <laughs> I guess we had lost the... Uh... Wait, who... did someone pick up the weapons? Yeah. Step up, Negra. What do you mean by stepping up? Stepping up to the task? The pressing win of fire task? Or a different one? I'll get it, I'll get it. Whoa? Mm, I guess not. 
I guess it is Vi- oh my god. So my belt doesn't fail again. That was really annoying. Oh. That was a bolstered front top. I'll pick up this hammer, I guess. Do I have to pick up the spear? No. I'm sure Smok can pick it up. Oh my god, it failed again. You're kidding me, yeah? Thanks for not too much, Tina. What's up? How are you? <laughs> Can't believe my belt failed twice in this dungeon now. <laughs> and smog spell failed too. I'll just soul rot this. Oh. This guy's so close, somehow he's not getting broken. I'm very impressed. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Mister! <laughs> Calm down, sir! Jesus! What's up? Your arrival proved timely, yet the battle rages on. Did somebody pick up the orb? Until these invaders are purged from our skies. Oh yeah, we did. I will lead the effort here while my disciples bring you to the necropolis. Oh, they fixed the thing now, right? I can, I can now run a fire instead of chaos bolts in the necropolis. Damn. Shit, I don't have a stun. Yes, it spawned! Amazing. <laughs> I 
My infernal is up. My bad. Wait, I literally just now realized we have an enhancement shaman. Like, just now. Oh shit. Man, now I jinxed it. I didn't notice the shaman and did it fine, and then I noticed the shaman and did that. It's my bad. Excuse me, please. Smock, Jesus. Apparently, apparently these mobs heard. Oh. Wait, smock that. Oh, shit. I guess we reset. Frankly, that's a skill issue. Uh, how is the road rotation opening if you get it in packs like two times emulate enough or do I have to have more up? Um, okay, the way it works with emulate is that you put as many em emulates as you can, as long as you're not overcapping shards. Because the most important thing for you to press is Rain of Fire. But if you don't have enough shards to press Rain of Fire, then what else, what are your options? I mean, think about it, right? Like, what could you possibly cast if you cannot cast Rain of Fire? You can cast Conflag. You can cast Incinerate, you can cast Immolate, and that's kind of it, right? And before you cast Incinerate, you definitely want to cast Immolate. But you do also want to use Conflag. So you kind of just follow this priority list. First question, do you have three shards? The answer is yes, Rain of Fire. Do you have less than three shards? The answer is yes, then check if you have Havoc ready. Do you have Havoc ready? Then press Havoc. And then press Immolate. And then you check again. Do you have three shards? Yes, press Rain of Fire. If not, check. Do you have Havoc up? No. Are there mobs without Immolate? Well, press Immolate. If you already have Immolates up, and you don't have Havoc ready, then uh, you can incinerate. Oh, are we not? I'm seeing this. Oh, it's bolstering. Have to wait. 
Ah, oh, shit. Well, that's unfortunate. If they're stream off, so you press rain of fire. Doesn't matter if you have a cup or not. Should they have, did I have both of them on me, but it was too late? I think I did. I could have made it around still, though. But I thought the other cleaver, um, like, got interrupted somehow? I don't know, it looked weird. Vampiric embrace. I just spam me in Rain of Fire with two trash and shards and bullstring. Wait, what does bullstring have to do with anything? When they have the same amount of HP? Huh? Wait, of course you, of course you Rain of Fire and two targets. If they have the same amount of HP. Why would I Chaos Bolt? That's just gonna uneven the HP. But on a Chaos Bolt. That makes no sense. Don't die, my friend. Oh, shit. He's not having a great time right now. I'm not in range of that, right? Okay, we're looking good, we're looking good. Wait, that one shot him? That's 26. Really? Huh. I'm dead now if I get it again. Unless I can line. Which I don't think I can. That's not me, okay. Your 
I mean, I'm confused. We're talking about the shard in, in, in Halls of Atonement? I might have missed half this conversation right now. What shard are we talking about? I thought you were talking about... Shards. Like, uh... Warlock shards. Now I'm confused. This uh, creation is not dying. I hope Smock is fine. Orb, yeah, we should orb. Okay, he's got it running. Oh, we didn't get the hook out. Maybe that's a good thing though. Oh, Smock died. Memoring. No! Whew. <laughs> okay, we're fine, apparently. <laughs> Man, I, I thought I can save this hammer because I got the rest off. But then everyone was just dying. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm not sure. Was that even a question? I mean, it obviously makes sense that you would chaos vault. I mean, I mean, come on, that's not something you have to talk about, though, right? I mean, at that point, that's just logical thinking, right? Like, obviously, you're not gonna rain a fire when there's a mob with a million HP, and next to it, there's a mob with 500k HP. Like, I mean, I don't know. If I'm gonna have to mention that, then... <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> like. Bolstering bad. Five, four, three, two, one. Bastion shall be laid to waste. Alright, let's do this. I'm gonna get the first one for sure. We have two battle rests, so we're fine actually. Ah, oh, should we only have one battle rest? Wait, my infernal didn't disappear! I can put another gate, but we don't have any more rests. Actually, we do have one more rest. Never mind. We just got it back up. Debt. Frankly, that's a skill issue. We can use. Uh... Naim. Okay, let's push the boss. I don't want to be sent down. Actually, wait. The gateway is ready again. Nice. Oh, 
Oh, nice. We still have that. We still have one. I Oh no, nice. Nice. Well played. GG's. The dude asked if it's worth to spam Raid on Fire on three targets. And yeah, the answer is yes. It all depends if the pack has a prior target like Shards and Hanal and Volstring. Well, I mean, yes, obviously, but that's like a specific scenario, right? Because, like, the answer is just yes. And then, of course, sometimes you won't, you don't want to spam Rain of Fire when there's other things, like other specific scenarios going on. But you can also say, oh, what if there's three targets, but only two are in Rain of Fire and the other one is outside? Well, then... You know, you also have to think about what you're gonna do. Oh, what if there's three targets, one has a lot more HP than the others? Oh, what if there's three targets and uh, one of them is immune? You know, like there's so many scenarios, but the answer to your question is just yes, right? Unless uh, there's something specific happening. And then you always need to adjust your gameplay. But overall, for your for the overall damage, it's you press Rain of Fire on three targets. You already press Rain of Fire on two targets. Technically. Wait, there's avoidance? Oh, there we go. I do have to leave at... Yeah, I don't think I can do another cam. Sorry, I don't even have time. Yeah, you, you rain a fire in two targets, unless you have Havoc, then you Chaos Bolt. But on two targets, it's not that... Uh, like, I think people are generally... I think people <laughs> have this weird perception that um, they're doing something wrong whenever they play Destro. And I'm sure there are people that do things wrong, but Destro, like, Destro were, like, it's pretty simple. If you do a lot less damage and you think you're not doing anything wrong, then maybe you are actually not doing anything wrong and it's just the content that you do. Because if you do a really high key and the mobs are alive for a really long time, and the tank is actually pulling a lot as well, then uh, it's going to be much easier for you, to, for you to do a lot of damage. Because of the way Warlock works. But I'll show you what I mean. Oh my god, I'm in Stormwind. How do you leave this place? <laughs> oh my god, how do I get out of here? Like here? Oh yeah, okay. Hmm... That means they're here, right? Or is it in the Dwarven area? Nah, it's, it's here, right? Fuck. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna check. <laughs> Work it. <laughs> So yeah, for example, um, like the, the the problem with Warlock, I'll show you this in a graph first, because uh, I always understand it that way the best. Not sure if you will understand it this way the best, but <laughs> I'll show you anyway. So if, you, if this is the amount of damage you do, and this is the key level, then a Warlock will kind of start, like, I don't know, here. And the higher the key level, the more damage you end up doing. This is overall damage, okay? While there are certain other classes who don't work this way, <laughs> other classes, for example, Windwalker, will probably start, like, here. And they don't gain much the higher the key is. You know, it goes like this, kind of. Same with Survival Hunter as well. They will also do something like this. 
Um, and Warlock is like one of the few classes at the moment that starts, or that basically just ramp really, really high. Like it's, it's, they, they end up all the way up here. And then people watch streamers, like people watch me or other Warlock players, and they see me do like so much more damage than everyone else. And uh, because I am here, right? Because this is the key level that I'm playing. So I'm doing this damage. And then you maybe are pugging a 15 key or something. And then you do, then you like in overall damage, you end up being like here or something. And then you wonder, oh my God, why, why do I do so little damage compared to like a hunter and a windwalker? And why does Nagura do so much? Well, it's really as simple as the, the whole ramping thing. Where the longer the mobs are alive and the more you're pulling, the more damage Warlock does. Like, it's really just as simple as that. Uh, you can check... The one thing that will tell you the most is the uh, um, Reign of Chaos uptime. You can check that, because usually the lower the key is, the faster mobs die. The lower your Reign of Chaos uptime is going to be. And then a higher key you do, you have a much higher Reign of Chaos uptime. You can check that on details. If you go to... Um, Why is this not possible? What the hell? Oh, I'm stupid. Okay. If you go to uh, misc buff up time, and then you can just see here. Like I just had seventy eight percent rate of chaos up time in that necrotic wake we just did, and sometimes it's it's even more. Like depending on the dungeon, right? If you do a gambit or something, you might have. Close to 90% Reign of Chaos uptime. Uh, well, if you do like a 15 key or something like that, your Reign of Chaos uptime might only be like 50 or something, or even less. And that will affect your damage a lot, of course. And then obviously, the, the faster the mobs die, the less shards you generate, the less often you can press Infernal. And overall, Infernal is almost exclusively all of the damage they do, right? If you look here... Like, it looks like Rain of Fire did most of my damage, but it's not true, because you have to... Like, when you think of infer Infernal damage, you have to add it all up. So this is Im Immolation Infernal, so 24.5% plus Immolation Blasphemy, so it's 30, uh, 35%. And then you also have to include this one, Infernal Awakening, which is the spawn of the Infernal, so plus 3.2%. And then this one as well, Blasphemy's Existence, that's Blasphemy Spawn, so you add this as well, plus 2.9. And then you also have to add the melees from the Blasphemy, 1.4. And the melees from the Infernal, 3.1. So yeah, if you add all of that together, then that will be the damage your Infernal does, right? Which ends up being like 50% of your damage approximately. And obviously, the more Reign of Fire you can spam, because a lot of people think that the Reign of Fire is the thing that does damage. And yeah, Reign of Fire does do a lot of damage, but look how many I casted. I casted 305 Reign of Fires. And look how many Immolation, uh, how many uh, Infernals I casted. Like, it doesn't actually say here. Actually, it would say here. No, it doesn't. But obviously, I cast a lot less Infernals than I casted Reign of Fire. So your Reign of Fire is basically just a generator that does damage. Like with Reign of Fire, you're, you're fueling your, your Infernals. Because your Infernals are the majority of the damage that you do as a Destro Warlock. And with Reign of Fire, you are basically reducing the cooldown of your Infernal to make sure that you can cast it more often and to proc more Blasphemies. And Reign of Fire... Um, because you run Inferno, because you run a Reign of Chaos, because you run Soul Conduit, because you run Wilfreds as well, the Legendary, you just uh, spam Reign of Fire, Reign of Fire, Reign of Fire, and then that will generate shards, so you can spam even more Reign of Fire, and the more you're spending, the faster your Infernal is going to be back, and then your Infernal is generating shards again, and then you just generate as many shards as you possibly can, which is the number one priority if you play Duster Warlock. The number one thing, the number one rule is generate as many shards as possible and don't overcap shards. Right? Because if you generate shards but you don't use them, then they're useless. 
So you need to generate as many shards as you can and spend as many shards as you can. Never overcap shards, if you can avoid it. Sometimes you have so many shards that you can't really avoid overcapping them, but uh, yeah, that's it. That's all you want to do. And of course, the lower, like the fewer mobs you're pulling, the less shards you generate. And at that point, uh, you have to start doing a normal rotation. <laughs> because when there are six mobs or more, then your rotation consists of pressing rain of fire. Like, you literally just don't do anything else because you generate so many shards. And if you consider the two rules, don't overcap shards and spend as many shards as possible, you don't even have time to press immolate or anything else. You just spam rain of fire, rain of fire, rain of fire, rain of fire, right? <laughs> but if you only pull like three mobs, four mobs, two mobs, then all of a sudden you don't endlessly generate shards. And then you have to do a normal rotation. And your normal rotation should just consist of trying to generate as many shards as possible. Again, so if you have four targets here, like if you look at these four dummies, then obviously I would just put Immolate on everything. I usually try to... When we pull a pack, I try to use Havoc as fast as I can to make sure it comes back up faster. And also um, because usually at the start of a pull, you don't generate as many shards, but then at the end of a pull, you generate a lot of shards because uh, you're, like, you're ramping, right? So usually I put uh, Immolate, Immolate when we pull four, and then I put Havoc and Immolate again. So now I save the global, basically. And then I will try to use my Canflex decks with, um, with my Havoc up. And I guess I incinerate if I don't have anything else to do. And that's it. And then you just refresh your Immolates. And you try to not uh, overcap your Conflex unless uh, you have too many shards. Because if you have too many shards, you want to spam Rain of Fire. Then you don't press conflict, obviously. And then you try to use Havoc on cooldown. And just keep up your emulates. <sighs> One thing that some people also, I guess, forget or don't know is that you should always target... Um, the main target whenever you put Soul Rod up, right? And usually, I guess it's also a thing that people don't necessarily know, is that your Infernals prefer to hit the target that you're targeting. Like if I cast a Conflict on this ra training dummy, then uh, my Infernals gonna hit that, right? Or my Infernals. So whenever there's something like bolstering or whatever, you do want to make sure you're targeting the highest HP target. Because your infernals are going to do a bit more damage to the, to the thing that you're targeting. Or when you're pulling a boss with trash. Unless the trash needs to die really fast, then of course you do want to target the trash. But if the trash does not need to die fast and you can just AoE it down, then you can focus the boss. Or you can hit the boss, so your infernals also hit the boss. What's up? So eighty percent of the damage is two buttons, rain of fire and infernal. Yes. You also don't really press anything else, right? In dungeons. <laughs> nice, Nos. I hope you enjoy playing your warlock. And yeah, there's not, not much else to to Warlock, honestly. <laughs> like, of course, when there's only one target or when there's two targets, you do want a Chaos Bolt. But it's not, like, I guess Chaos Bolting, like, single target is the easiest part of the rotation because all you do is keep Immolate up and Chaos Bolt. The only thing you can look a little bit, you can, the one thing you can pay a bit of attention to um, is Eradication, right? Chaos Bolt increase the damage you deal to the target by 10%. Um, that is something that I guess some people don't necessarily care or consider. 
but you can do that because uh, if you're tracking it on your nameplate or on your week or something you can see now it has seven seconds of um this this buff and you also have to consider that chaos bolt is at travel time so um what you can do instead of instantly always spending your shards because sometimes when they when people play that sort like they will just have two shards and immediately chaos bolt and sometimes you can hold on to your shards a bit to make sure you're refreshing eradication, right? Because if I just cast Chaos Bolt, Chaos Bolt, Chaos Bolt, then I will override my eradication really fast, and then afterwards it will drop off. So you want to try to keep your eradication on the boss as much as you can. You still don't want to overcap shards, of course, but um, yeah, like right now I could instantly cast a Chaos Bolt, or I could just cast some Incinerates in between and then Chaos Bolt to make sure I'm extending this eradication or keep it up as much as I can, right? Especially now that I have an instant proc as well. So I have a blasphemy proc right now. And I can just like refresh it at the end too. Again, if I want to, right? You can just sit on the shards for a little bit. Unless you have a lot of haste and you're infernal up. Because when your infernal is up, you will generate a lot of shards, even on single target. So you don't necessarily want to sit on your shards for too long. Enrique, what's up? Hey, Raven. Do you drop Silrod after your Infernal comes in? Uh, so the thing with Silrod, I don't think it's necessarily like always the same. I kind of improvise with Silrod. I definitely cast Infernal first and then Silrod. Like I'd never do it the other way around. Um, but sometimes... Because of the legendary we're playing, sometimes not so clear cut. Because the way um, the way legendary works is that um, you get haste and crit depending on how many targets you hit with your soul rot. So, for example, when you pull a boss, there's three relics. So that means you get more haste and more crit if you hit all of the relics with the soul rot, right? But then you lose the dot damage on the ur mop. Because that means if you're soul rotting at the start, that means you get your soul rot on the relics and not on the ur mob. And additionally, it also means that um, as soon as the, the ur spawns, you might be wasting some globals on um, ur instead of using your full globals to do something else. But yeah, usually I just I just infernal. I, I usually when we pull a boss, I usually immolate the boss, infernal, soul rot, and then I just chaos bolt. And on trash packs, you can you can technically delay your soul rot even more. Like if you're pulling a big pack and you press infernal, but you don't have shards. So let's say you you for some reason you only have like a shard, one shard or something, and then you pull uh, a trash pack and your infernal is ready and your soul rot is ready, then you can go in and immediately like infernal soul rot, but. Soul Rod, of course, giving you so much haste and crit um, would give you more damage if you're already like kind of spamming Rain of Fires and you already have Infernals running, right? So sometimes I delay my Soul Rod a bit more uh, to make sure that I'm in spamming Rain of Fire mode when I have the stacks, right? When I have the, stat the secondary stats. Because if you immediately cast Soul Rod, you might not actually have enough... Um, enough shards to be spamming it, right? And it's a very short window, soul rod window. So you, want, you want to make sure you get the most of it. Unless the trash is dying really fast, then, then obviously you don't really want to raid. And the, the haste that you get from soul rod also helps you generate shards as well, so you do want to consider that as well. Because the more haste you have, the faster everything goes and the more shards you get. 
So Soul Rod might actually help you to, to generate more stuff and to get your damage going as well. Which you can do if Nobs die somewhat fast. Now the relics do have the same HP. <laughs> There's nothing that infuriates me more when I am single target hitting a relic and then it doesn't die. <laughs> like if we are pulling a relic pack and I'm selflessly casting Chaos Bolt instead of Rain of Fire on the relic and then it's not the one that dies first, then that makes me really mad. <sighs> Cause then I literally could have pressed the Rain of Fire instead of that Chaos Bolt. <laughs> And then we don't even get the correct one. No, I saw Rod when the relics are still alive. To get more haste and crit. Alright guys, so I'm gonna have to leave unfortunately already. Sorry for the short stream, but I have an appointment today, which I thought I have on Friday. And it ended up being on Monday instead. So, my friend and I drove an hour to get to the place, and then uh, we didn't have an appointment at that point. So, the appointment is actually today. It happens, you know what happens. Thank you so much for 15 months, Gixi, what's up? Thank you. But I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow we might actually play with Shella and Psy and Royben, if it's gonna work out. It looks like they are playing pretty late though. Cause they're still not online. So I guess they start playing in the evening. Which wouldn't have worked today anyway, because I'm raiding. Um, but maybe we find a time to play tomorrow. That'd be nice. You guys wanna watch Smok? Doing the no healer challenge. He's doing 27 spires now. Let's see if that works out. I think I should be okay there. I can probably face tank these even, so they die. Have fun watching chess, Jack. <sighs> At least close to face tank them. Okay, Survival hunters and monks, monks are specialists in terms of getting the wrong relics. Oh yes, though. it's almost always their fault. They're somehow just nuking the wrong relics. It's almost as if they're doing it on purpose too. It's like no shot they're not doing this on purpose. <laughs> Quaking so weird. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a nice rest of your day. Goodbye. Can break, heal the whole group, yeah. <laughs>